Hello everybody, and welcome to delivering seamless multiplayer experiences globally with game servers. My name is Mark Mandel, I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud, and I work on open source tools for backends for multiplayer games. Before we get started, just want to give you a quick reminder. If you have any questions throughout the duration of this talk, please make sure to add them to the Q&A section on this website. We'll try to get to them as soon as we possibly can and get you an answer. Awesome. So what do I want to talk to you about today? So today, I want to talk to you about dedicated game servers. So basically, any kind of authoritative simulation server that all your clients connect to so that they can play a multiplayer game together. Now, one thing that we see here at Google Cloud is we often see that studios want and need control over the orchestration and coordination play platform for those game servers, especially at a global scale, so that they can tailor it to the very specific needs of the game that they're making. What I want to talk to you about today is how we at Google Cloud can come meet you where you're at and be able to provide you with solutions that are going to be able to give you both the control and the scale that you need to be able to build those kinds of experiences for your players that they're just going to love. To start, maybe you have an existing orchestration platform. Maybe you have a game that you've been running for a while and you want to look at Google Cloud and what we have and what we can provide for you. Some of this might already be familiar, but maybe not. So let's go over it again. So if you have very physics heavy, very compute heavy workloads, you want to be looking at our compute optimized VMs. If you're running a VM type workload, um, these are generally our C2 instances and are really our high performance compute workload VMs. But maybe you aren't running, maybe say a strong physics simulation. Maybe you're running, say, just a general sort of lightweight game server type workload, or maybe even a relay server. In that case, our general purpose VMs, such as say our N2s or our N2Ds, would be a great fit for you here. Then if we look at the networking side, if you come to Google Cloud, we have our premium tier networking as well. That means that we try and get you as quickly as possible for your network traffic onto the Google Cloud Fiber, and we can transport you as quickly as possible so your players can have the greatest experience they can. Now, it is a premium tier network product, so maybe you've already built out your system so that it works completely acceptably over the internet without that very fast uh, fiber in between. In which case, you can take some cost savings and go use our standard network that is cost optimized and run straight over the internet as well. So lots of options there if that's the thing you want to use. Now, something that's new is something that, peop something that people have been asking for for a long time. So regarding DDoS for UDP, we've heard you all loud and clearly. And we love giving you all what you collectively have asked for. DDoS for UDP is coming soon. Keep an ear out for an announcement and more detail in the coming months. If you're interested in being part of the private preview, please reach out to your account rep or customer engineer and definitely let us know. I'm super excited for this feature personally. Now, maybe you've moved away from VMs and you're already running some kind of containerized workload with your own orchestration system. Google Kubernetes Engine is a fantastic Kubernetes platform for you. Not only does it provide a series of management tooling, including scaling, repair, and upgrade capabilities, but also it's super fast to scale. You can bring up clusters in minutes as well as nodes in minutes as well. So if you need to respond to your player workloads, you're able to do so. On top of that, it's hybrid ready. Maybe you have an on-prem uh, investment that you want to take advantage of. You're able to do so with GKE. As well as that, there are a series of native security tooling that is baked in as well for wonderful security. But maybe you're building a brand new experience. Maybe it's a whole new Greenfield project and you're building a brand new game. So let's talk about what we can do at Google Cloud to help you in that kind of environment. So usually when we're talking about building multiplayer games, especially with game servers, there are three things that game developers need most. An issue-free launch day, right? Whether that's the initial launch day or maybe providing some new content. Uh, being able to remove toil from your operations and maintenance teams, right? Those day two and day three operations, trying to keep that as limited as possible so that your engineers can spend time engineering. But also, as we were talking about before, control to fit the needs of your game. Having an orchestration platform that does the specific things that are optimized for your game. Now, current options often don't fit. On one side, you might see things like uh, virtual machines, like all the control in the world, but a whole lot of work you have to take on yourself, including making sure things scale as well as long-term operations. On the other side, there are a lot of great fully managed services, but they're not going to give you the control you possibly need as well. So we want to come somewhere in between. 
So this is where we like to talk about Google Cloud Game Servers. Google Cloud Game Servers is a management layer that sits on top of Agones and Kubernetes and allows you to power production grade workloads uh, for your game servers, whether you're running two clusters or 200 clusters. And it delivers on those three things we were talking about previously, right? We can scale up to your launch day workloads, whether it's again, your first day or as new content comes out. We have a variety of tooling, some of which we'll talk about today to reduce the amount of toil on your operations teams for day two and day three. But I think actually most importantly, we give you enough interfaces and enough control while taking away a lot of those, you know, like that toil to be able to tailor it to the very specific needs of your game. So you can build the game experience that you want for your players for that multiplayer game that you're building. So what does that look like? Let's go in. So we have a series of foundations that we build on top of. At the bottom level, we have Kubernetes. Yeah, the distributed systems platform that I think we've all grown to love. What's great about this is there's a whole ecosystem of tooling that already exists, and it may be something that you're already, already familiar with. From there, we have the open source game server scaling system Agones that teaches a Kubernetes cluster how to run game servers, what a game server lifecycle looks like, as well as a whole bunch of functionality that just makes life easier for, uh, for playing game servers, including uh, integration SDKs, as well as just being able to go kubectl get game server, which is kind of cool. And then from there, we add another layer, which is Google Cloud Game Servers. This is where we go, okay, we're great at one cluster with Agones, but now we wanna be able to run it maybe two or more, maybe just for the insurance to say, hey, maybe one day we are gonna need to be able to scale, but maybe we're also at a point where, hey, we know we have a global audience and we just need to be able to support them. This is where Google Cloud Game Server comes into play. While it still gives you control because you still have access to all of the programmatic interfaces of Agones, but now we can do things at a multi-cluster level and at a production level that enables us to react to our players uh, and be able to handle the kind of workload that we wanna see on our hit games. Let's dig into some concepts. So we've already talked a little bit like about game server clusters. They're essentially just clusters that are Kubernetes clusters running a Gones. That's it. From there, we let you group clusters into what we call realms. Usually you're gonna coordinate them basically by latency by where your players are based. So as you can see in this example, we have a realm for our US players, a realm for our Europe players, and a realm for our Japan players. From there, we're able to overlay configs and deployments that enable us to tell our series of realms and as well as our global set of realms, what sort of game server fleets or game servers we want to distribute amongst that set, right? This tells it what game servers we're deploying, as well as maybe any other auto-scaling uh, capabilities we wanna add as well, and maybe some schedules for those as well. All kinds of all that good stuff about what game servers are running where. We can also do other fun stuff like uh, overrides and be able to run certain workloads in certain realms, all kinds of other coordination abilities, but we can do it at a production scale across multiple game server clusters. So that's stuff you might necessarily have seen before, but what we wanna also tell you about is stuff that's coming soon. So we also want to remove toil for your operations team. Uh, we've definitely heard that people, uh, when they want to go and install a Gones uh, on a cluster, they don't necessarily want to do that work themselves. And sometimes the work of coordinating which Agones release goes with which Kubernetes cluster can be a little tricky or just tough to keep track of. So coming soon, we're going to have it set up so that when you register your game server cluster with your Realm, it can install a Gones for you, the correct version, and do all the right things so it's something you don't have to worry about. This is great when you're first spinning up a cluster, but also day two, day three, is you need to do upgrades as time goes on. We're also not gonna get in your way, so if there's extra software that you wanna install in that cluster as well, you're still gonna be able to do so. Secondly, I wanna talk a little bit about matchmaking integration. So currently, setting up that allocation endpoint so that you can request a uh, game server from a particular realm, a little bit tricky. There's some cert management and a bunch of things you need to install, it's not the best experience. So coming soon is gonna be a simple allocator endpoint that is gonna be available and set up for you automatically with your registration of clusters in your system. This means you don't have to do any of that work and you'll have a single endpoint that you can call to say, hey, I would like to uh, give me a game server from this particular realm and mark it as allocated so that we know we have players on it. 
On top of that, we're gonna give you a bunch of tooling for you, to, for you to be able to control which clusters are allocatable, how and when, so you can do things like upgrades, possibly A-B tests, like all kinds of other fun stuff too. So that control is also still available to you as well. So awesome new features there. Finally, in private preview, so if you're interested in this, please get in contact with us. We'd love to let you have access to it. Um, is our multi-cloud multi and hybrid cloud setup. So maybe for example, you have an on-prem investment that you wanna take advantage of and you wanna be able to burst into the cloud. This functionality is gonna give you a single pane of glass through Google Cloud Game Servers so that you're able to do so, but be able to give you basically one management interface to be able to coordinate and allocate across all your game servers, both on-prem and in the cloud. And finally, I also just wanna highlight that the open source investment in Agonis continues to go forward. Uh, here are some of my favorite uh, features from the past year. Uh, as the Windows support in Kubernetes continues to evolve, we now have alpha, alpha support for Windows containers as well. So if you wanna run Windows containers for your game servers, maybe in dev, or maybe you have some other Windows uh, production workloads you wanna run, we can now do that as well. We also have alpha support for player tracking, keeping track of what players are in which game server and for how long, for example. Um, that's available now too, if you wanna play with that as well. We have a whole new revamped Unreal Engine plugin as well for integration. So much nicer than the original. I definitely would check that out once more. And even some smaller things that I think are really important, like being able to uh, allocate a port to any container. Previously, you could only choose one container to expose publicly. Now you can choose any one you like. So, Lots of little things and big things. We continue to grow when the open source once more. Okay, so why don't we get stuck into a demo so I can show you exactly how some of this stuff works uh, and you can see it in real time. Does that sound cool? Awesome, let's do that. So here we have uh, two realms I have already set up and are ready to go. So I have one realm in Europe with two clusters already registered and I have one realm in the United States with another two clusters that are registered. Now, I haven't deployed anything here, so there's nothing here yet uh, that is already ready to go. So there's no game servers anywhere. Um, I've already connected to one of these game servers, uh, one of these game server clusters, I should say. And if I query them, I can also see there's nothing in this particular cluster. Awesome, nothing's there, fantastic. Um, I'll show you another cute trick that we'll have a look at here. If we go into Kubernetes engine, I love this. We have a look at our object browser. You can actually see workloads across multiple clusters. So here we can also see, right? There's no fleets, there's no game servers. We haven't deployed anything, okay? Magic hands. Okay, so let's actually deploy a game server a fleet across all of our clusters. So here I am going to take this example uh, fleet specification. Here, I'm, I'm not gonna do any auto scaling in this instance, but I'm just gonna uh, deploy a instance of what's called Super Tuxcott. If you haven't played it, it is a great Mario clone uh, with uh, Linux characters. And I'm just gonna deploy two instances to every cluster across our entire set, across all our realms as well. So let me take this and I'm just gonna copy that. We'll come over here and come into our game server deployments. So first things first, I'm gonna create a deployment. A deployment is basically just a container of configs. It's not gonna actually do anything other than hold stuff for the moment. We'll just call it SDK for Super Tuxcat. Now we get to add configs. Configs are immutable and we can put as many inside a deployment as we like. So I'm gonna create this config. We're gonna call it V1. And a fleet config of V1, let me get rid of that. And we'll just paste that in here. So. Again, that's just our two replicas of our super tux card example. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a scaling config for auto scaling, but I'm not gonna do that today. Let's create that, click okay. Take a second. Now this is currently inactive. Nothing is rolled out. So nothing is actually on the clusters yet. So we can go to manage rollout, choose our configuration and decide what it is we wanna roll out. We may have multiple configurations. We could also choose overrides at this time to say specify if we want a different type of configuration applied to a specific realm. If you wanted to do something like say, put in a test fleet somewhere in like to Australia and do a test run to see if that works better or if something goes wrong, that kind of stuff before rolling out to the rest of the world. Okay, now we have our active config that's been rolled out V1. If we go into our cloud shell, we'll get rid of that. 
we should now be able to say kubectl okay, get game servers. And we can see that we have two game servers here running on that machine. Uh, if we want to go back to our previous trick, which is I love this, this is, just makes me so happy, go into our object browser. We can see with just one command, we're able to now see that we have game servers running across all of the clusters in our system. And it doesn't matter how many we have. Right? So we're able to do that kind of orchestration. So that works out super nice. Um, so what I'm also going to do is do what we call allocation. Yeah, Allocation is um, being able to request out of a fleet of game servers or just a set. Uh, you can choose through some sophisticated selectors if you so desire. Uh, and say, hey, give me a game server and mark it as allocated so I know not to remove it when players are playing on it. But I'm going to take it to the next level. Uh, I'm going to do multi-cluster allocation. I'm going to use our previous system, uh, the one that's currently available now, but it's going to be very similar to what you're going to see in the new allocation endpoint. So I have this allocate script to be able to do this. It's already got our cert set up. Uh, let's run that now. So this is running uh, against uh, one of our endpoints. And if we look at this particular line here, so here we can see we got a game server back. It's our US2 cluster, which is the one we're connected to right now. So that if I say kubectl get game servers, we can see one of them is allocated. But you know what? Let's allocate everything uh, from this cluster. That'll give us another one. Okay, another one from this cluster. Since we've run out from this cluster, if I run this one more time, it's now going to move over to US1 and give me a game server from over there. Okay. Multi-cluster allocation, running across multiple clusters and being able to coordinate the allocation between the two. But let's actually play a game. Let's grab one of these and play a little instance of Super Tux Cut. This is running on the Pacific Coast where I am in the United States. Um, all right, let's grab that IP import. Let's come over here and say run game. Okay, so here we go. Here is our Tux Cut. Set that up, click OK, I'm connected. Let's also run some AI bots just locally. So I have some friends to play with. Excellent, we have some bots. Let's click Start Race. I like being, and that looks like a fun one. OK, so this is going to connect, and it's actually already connected to an instance of the Super Tux Cut dedicated game server running uh, on the Pacific Coast here in the US, and I am able to now play a game against it. Now, I could have played on any number of the different um, clusters that are available here. As you saw, I have a, a US uh, realm, but I'm just going to play here for now, and I'm going to lose very, very quickly. But here I am playing against a bot. Uh, everything is working pretty smoothly. It's actually working quite nicely. Actually, I actually don't know if I've played this level before. This is great. Oh, and I'm terrible. Um, but you can see me playing this game and it's going pretty well as I'm playing against other players. Awesome. All right, let me shut this down and we'll come back. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so we've been able to see a game that has been able to be played. So you get a sense of the sort of stuff that we can do now with Google Cloud Game Servers. Before we wrap up though, I definitely wanna highlight that we have a variety of open source tooling for supporting uh, your game server workloads as well. You've probably already heard of OpenMatch, but if you haven't, it's our open source framework for being able to do uh, matchmaking at global scales. So that you don't have to shard your player base and while still allowing you the control and flexibility to write your matchmaking logic as you see fit. We also recently announced a storage solution called OpenSaves, which is an opinionated API that provides storage for a variety of backends so that your game developers don't have to be aware or worry about what game storage is being used for generic types of information. It can speed up your development process, which is great. If you check out some of our other sessions, that'll be covered there as well. To wrap things up with game servers on Google Cloud, we want to meet you where you're at, regardless of where you are in your game development journey. If you already have an existing system, we have a variety of products and features that should be a great fit for you. But maybe if you're building something new and you want to get into that cloud native ecosystem, Google Cloud Game Servers is a wonderful platform to be able to run your game servers. If you're interested in learning more, please check out cloud.google.com slash game servers. You can also check out agonis.dev. If you're interested in our open source projects, check out github.com slash google for games. And finally, also check out cloud.google.com slash gaming. Finally, 
Thank you so much for spending time with me. I know your time is valuable, but I'm super excited to see what sort of games that you're gonna build.